God has designed and engineered you to prosper in where you are and what you are going into. Let me show you something here. He says over here in Matthew 27, he said, which of you take a thought can add any, not, not, not any cubit, but one cubit to his structure. Worrying cannot change anything. Worrying about a situation cannot cause you to move to another level. If a situation is about to take place, look, the Bible said, look, you need to cast all that on me. Because what you're worrying, you're causing your body to be torn down. You're causing the worry. You're causing anxiety. You're causing a hypertension to come upon you. You're causing different ailments of your body to malfunction or dysfunction in the way God functioned them to be, uh, designed them to be, uh, function in. So what he says over in Matthew 27, he said, which of you can take, which of you by talk, but by taking thought can add one cubit unto your structure? I want to look at that a little bit closer. I want to see something over here in the book, uh, in one of my breakdowns. Yeah, I want to see something here. It said, which of you, by taking thought, he said, worrying or fainting, can add one cubit to his structure. Whatever is going to happen, listen to me, cannot be stopped by what worrying. That's some of the biggest things that got most of our parents out of here. Worrying about our hard-headed children doing things they're not supposed to do. He running across town doing things he ain't supposed to be doing. Mama at home worrying. She running up and down the street like she ain't got no sense. Hanging out there where she ain't got no business going. Mama at home worrying, just praying. Causing her to get to her grave earlier. But God said in this season, where he's taking you, he said, cast all your cares on me. Because I'm the one that cared for you. He goes on and speaks about this. He said in the 28th verse. Let me see this in the 20th verse. He said, and why do you take thought, meaning worry?" For about raiment, your clothes. And this is what we do. We got to have the latest fashion. We got all the tennis shoes. You know what I'm saying? We got all these things that we feel that's going to be popular to the world. But we got to understand, ain't none of this stuff going to go with us. We, we, we can't take it with us. But the world has got us mesmerized to a point that we feel the more fashion we have, the more titles and positions and cliques we have, the better we are in the eyes of people. Don't you know they got to stand before God and what, just, what, just like you do? And what I'm trying to get you guys to see and understand here in this particular message, there's a season that you got to shift in, that you got to get out of the area of immaturity and go in the area of maturity. Most of us who walk in the, in the body of Christ and walk in the church of God, we can't even stand each other. We can't even stand each other even on our Facebooks. We can't even stand each other on our Twitter. We can't stand each other even on just being in the presence of one another. But yet we say we love the Lord. The Bible declares that bitter and sweet and came out of the same fountain. Wait, that's the same thing about your mind. You can't be thinking evil thoughts about people and then say you love the Lord. And then you thought a bad thought in your mind and you, you speak something different out your mouth. You know that's a lie. That's a reprobated mind. You think of one thing, you speak of something else different. Now, 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 you know that's not right. Now, how are you going to move to another area of your life if your mouth all tore up and your mind tore up at the same time? And then when you walk in this tore up, you know, you just tore up from the floor up. You know, you, you, but you yet you saying out of your mouth that I love the Lord. I'm not criticizing anybody because you know what? I was the first one like that. Put my mouth on people saying things about people all not to say. And I had to believe and understand the decree by the word of God. I was just as messed up as everybody else. Now, I had to understand that I had to read to my own sins. And I had to walk in my own lane. And this is like this radio station. I got so many people who waste my time saying they want to be a part of what God's doing here in this kingdom. But yet they, they, they go on about doing what they want to do. See, see those people who call up by wind doctrine, it's a matter of time before they fall. It, don't, 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 go, don't get mad, Tito. It's a matter of time before you come down. Why? Because the word of God says like this. You should be planted by a tree by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in the season. When you plant it, you receive the seasons that God has in store for you. When you go out there and dig a tree up out the ground, it can't produce the season. It can't produce the roots to go down and then cause the very branches to spring forth. See, this is what I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen. You got to catch this. He said, when you continue not to be planted by the tree of rivers of water, I'm talking about people who just like popcorn. They, 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 the pastor says something over in this church, they can't stay there, and they keep getting these revelations that they feel God told them something. God told me this. God told me that. God said, God, well, hold on a second. G give me the, get, show me something about the first assignment that you finished. Everything we read in the book of Joshua, he, could, he did everything the Lord told him to do. From Joshua 1 to Joshua 6, when he got the revelation to the Jericho wall, from the time he got the revelation to go across, everything he, he got from the Lord, he produced it. But now we're in a position now in the body of Christ. The reason we can't come into our season because we keep on jumping. We can't stay still. 
The Bible said have patience. And let patience have its perfect work. That's why Paul said you can't be carried away by every wind doctrine. Everything that comes to your mind to make you think that God said something. And all of a sudden you jump at it. And everybody say something to you that may sound good. You jump on the bandwagon. I call those bandwagon jumpers. They can't stay in one place. They got to jump somewhere. And everybody just come messing them up. Speaking all kinds of stuff into the mind. But why? They are solidified in their thinking. And they wonder why they're going through all the stress modes. They wonder why they're having heart pains. They wonder why they're going in another house hospital they wonder why the kids ain't acting right because they're not casting all their cares on the lord because he don't want to care for you you want to go you want to flourish in the ministry that god designed you to get in start lining up with the word of god start being obedient to what the word of god is declaring in your life look get rid of all your enemies what am i saying be able to pray for them to despitefully use you you block your own seasons by coming into the calamity with people who are in your own on your own team People who confess the word of God and not walking the way you want to walk, they ain't no better than you because you was there before too. You was messed up before too. You, you was out there. You, you, had, you had the beer. You had the wine. You had the drink. You had it in your hand too. And some of you still doing it. You, you understand what I'm saying? You talking about why somebody isn't going to their season. You need to look at yourself. That's why he says over in the book of 1 Corinthians, first let a man examine himself to see if he's of the faith. People keep jumping around. Trees, trees that keep jumping up and down won't bear no root. I guarantee you. You, 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 one thing over here, you jump up over there. You stop in your own season because you can't stay still. And the reason you keep around saying Jesus, 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 and that, that's just a matter of insanity because God hears you. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. The Bible said, come to me and shut your door. Pray to me in private. And what do you do? I will reveal to you openly. And everything that's in the dark has got to come to light. God will expose you in a time of a season. You keep on playing around with this thing and don't know which way you're going, you're going to find out where your season is. And this is what I'm speaking to you about kingdom seasons. Before ordering you to walk in the kingdom that God has you to walk in, you got to really understand that God declared in the creed that no good thing he holds from those who walk upright. That's what he told you. Psalms 84, 11, can I talk to somebody this afternoon? He goes on and begins to tell you over oh, Mark 9, 20, you're going to have to learn how to believe. The Bible said that just shall, according to Romans 1 and 17, will walk by faith. When you believe and understand that every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God will go forth. And if he spoke a word in your life in this time of season before you were born, God will by no means take back that what he had declared. He says it right there in Psalms 89 and 34. I will not alter my covenants, nor the plans, nor the words that go out of my mouth. God saying you got to line up. And when you line up and understand that in your life, God has created you to do something supernatural. Far beyond your imagination and understanding. But if you keep on running around people who try to give you accolades to make you feel more than what you are, you are already lost. Because why? You're following people rather than following God. When you get yourself tied up in those situations and you don't seem to understand where God is trying to get you to go, you are already lost the case right there. You know, it's a matter of time before you fall. Because you keep on looking at a man rather than looking at God. Now, he said, I don't bring a word into the land unless I reveal it through the prophet. Yet, yeah, all he is is a mouthpiece. All I am is a mouthpiece. That, that people don't even need to listen to the station. I, I'm not forcing you to listen to the station. I'm just trying to show you something in the season that you're in. If you want to move, you got to learn how to pray. And when you learn how to pray, you got to know how to seek God with all your heart. And when you seek God with all your heart, you got to get your relationship right with Christ. You got to consider and bring all your faults and what you messed up at. Reprobated mind, anger, malice, jealousy, envy, heresy, strife, all that stuff that's in you. And you know it's in you because some of y'all can't even get off the phone from talking back. See, see, when people get on the phone to talk to you, they mess your season up. When you get on the phone and begin to talk to people and they talk about somebody else, you need to hang the phone up. That, take, that stuff takes two or three months to get up out your ear. All that gossip, talking about other people, get, get that, you, you're blocking your season. Now all that stuff is just a blockage to stop what God has really in store for you. I, I, I don't get involved with it. I don't hang out with them. People who criticize me, what I do, I don't, I don't even listen to them. Because you know what? I, I walk one way. I, I'm, I'm walking one way. That's with Christ. You don't want to walk with me? Then don't walk with me. Because I know. In the area in which I am, you, you, can't, you can't fool me in this. You can't come to me, and I'm not selling nothing. I'm, 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 I don't want you to get this wrong. You can't come to me and tell me to put $1,000 on the table, and God going to bless me. No, God told me freely give and freely receive. 
You can't come to me and explore in the word of God to me and fleece me about what God told me about if you put a thousand dollars on God, go bless you tomorrow. No, I'm not going to fall for that one. The Bible declares and tells me that everything he has is in the kingdom of God. And if, if my, if what my heart is, that's what my treasure be. If God is calling me to do something in the season I'm in, I'm going to do it. You can't get to me and telling me that if you, if you give a thousand dollars a day, God going to bless you. No, I, you can take that to somewhere else. Because God never designed to understand, to realize, to make you feel that your blessings and what he designed you freely to give you, that he died on the cross, had to pay a price from a man's hands that will make them feel opposite what God has declared in your life. Now, you can, you can get me with that one. Now, I pay tithes, and I, t I, I encourage people to pay their tithes because the ministry does take money. But when you start putting emphasis and criteria on the amount of blessings that you're going to get based on dollars, I can't fall for that one. You, you got to take that one somewhere else. The Bible declared that he had a plan for me. According to Jeremiah 20 11, he said he got a plan for me. He told me it's good and not an evil. He told me nothing about that I got to pay a price for this. Most of y'all who try to buy your salvation are already messed up. You got to sit back and get on your knees. Earnestly get your relationship right with Christ. See, religion versus uh, uh, relationship, is it, you got to get that right. Religion will get you so far. Relationship will get you all the way in. It ain't how much you do. The Bible says it's by not by your works that any man should boast. You can't get in the kingdom of God by your works. And that's what, what am I saying? You can't give to a point that you feel that you gave a million dollars a day. That's going to get you to the kingdom of God. I've seen people give a million dollars. Their life's still jacked up. Some of these NFL players. I'm not talking about everybody. You know, some of their life is all jacked up. They get millions and millions of dollars into the kingdom. thinking They can buy their way in. And they like still jacked up. Because God said, you can't pay your way into this. Because you got to learn to walk up right. And he said, no good thing will I withhold. It's from him. Not from you to them. He said, no good thing will I withhold. He never put a price on it. He said, if you seek me first, I never seen nothing in there by the dollar bill. But we understand that we pay tithes and offering. We believe that. At Harvest New Life, we pay that. But I don't push people in money line. I got $1,000 for you over here. I got $1,000. Who want to get $10,000? Who get $5,000? I don't deal with that money line stuff because that ain't in the kingdom of God. I don't believe that. That woman who had one might and the Pharisees gave out of their abundance. God stopped the whole dissertation. Jesus stopped the whole dissertation and said, this woman got up all she had and y'all got it. Y'all gave out of your abundance. When God is about to move on you and do something you're not for a new season, don't worry where you are because if you believe that everything you have is in the kingdom and all you have to do is continue to ask God and he gets you unbrightedly and not it, 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 not holding from you, you're walking into new seasons. It doesn't matter how big of a church you go to. It doesn't matter how much you are a name in that church, how many people know you. When you understand that your relationship right is right with God, when you got a personal relationship with Christ, then he'll show you more than you ever seen in your entire life. I'm telling you, when you go to pray to God, it'll be just like another man sitting there talking to you. You got to believe and understand it's not by any, it's not by any work that any man should boast, he says in Galatians, but your relationship. You got to have a relationship with Christ. Christ is trying to move you into a new era, into a new season. He's trying to put you into the whole new dimension. But we just keep on bumping our head against the wall, complaining about the knots on our head. I don't know why people do that. You keep on running against the, you keep, not, 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 you keep on running in the temple, like, like he said in Jeremiah 7. You keep saying the temple, the temple, the temple. But Jeremiah, the word of God changed in Jeremiah, look, just stand at that gate. When all them people come in there, tell them they better get themselves right. Don't come up in here for fashion. Don't come up in there for looks. Don't come in for uh, accolade. You better get yourself right. Matter of fact, Jeremiah 7, look, said, amend your ways. Check yourself and know why you're coming up in it. Because you know what? Your salvation is on the line. And if you're going to fall short because you want to come in with popularity, you want to come up with status, you want to come up with names, and you want to come up with positions, you done messed up already. Just like I tell you about that woman at the dissertation with Jesus. The Pharisees gave up out of their abundance. They had large telatropies. They expanded their borders. Paul showed them up. And so y'all full of, y'all, 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 y'all look like whitewashed tombs. But y'all all full of dead man bones. He, 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 he broke them all open. Because the Pharisees didn't do nothing but add to the commandments. They added to the Torah what Moses had gave. Everything that Jesus did, they went against it. They added to the structure. Just like they added to their garments. 
apostles, bigger speakers. And that's what we are doing sometimes. All these things I'm telling you are hindering you from your walk going to the kingdom of God if you don't understand who you are in Christ. I don't care how good your garments look. I don't care how big your church is. I don't care how many people you got around me, how many names you are known around the world.